having Miles back, um, was that more of like a precautionary thing or was that kind of like the plan once he did suffer the injury to get him back this last week of the preseason? Um, first, you don't really know simply because you don't know how well he has healed. Um, of course, our training staff do an awesome job of getting our players ready to play. Um, it just worked out that way. We're in our last preseason game, and hopefully we can give him some touches. Speaking of touches, um, Cam Peoples, we haven't really seen much of him in the preseason games. Do you anticipate that changes for Friday? Yeah, I do. And Cam's been working hard, man. I'm proud of Cam. Uh, he's learning offense, and uh, he's learning what to do in offense from protections, routes, aiming points, alignments, and uh, he's just waiting on his opportunity, and he'll take full advantage of it. Miles said today he absolutely will be ready for the opener. What have you seen out of him that makes you feel like he'll be ready for the opener? And what's he bring to this offense that none of the other backs can, I guess? Well, he just, you know, of course, Miles has that dog inside him that I love uh, since drafting him in Philly. And um, his preparation, his focus, uh, just getting back, being able to feel good after suffering an injury, of course, uh, was number one. And I tell you what, man, he's been working his butt off every day to get back and practice first. So, you know, of course, we all try to not, as coaches, look ahead. We work, worry about practice first. And then if he can get through practice, we talk about the game. Deuce, do you see a difference in this Miles to the one you had in Philly? I do. Um, and that has a lot to do with age, being older, um, being in different offenses, understanding these offenses as far as protections, routes, understanding his role in the offense. And you look at him last year, man, I was just really proud of him, what he was able to do um, in, in Philly. And you know the numbers speak for themselves. This is his first time really being the older guy in the room. He had Jordan, he had Boston out in Philly. Um, what have you seen from him from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, and I was about to speak on that. Um, just hearing him talk, hearing him speak to the guys and giving his opinion on certain things that he see on film, hearing him out there on the field, coaching those guys is kind of different because I had him as a rookie. And um, sometimes I look back to see if that's his voice. I'd be like, okay, I like this. So um, just that leadership. And, and one thing about Miles, Miles is one of those uh, who can feel the room. So he'll tell you, if I need to go out there and lead by example, I will. If I need to go out there and lead verbally, I will. And he's done both. With uh, uh, Spencer Brown, he's, a, he's kind of a bigger back. What have you seen from him so far during the summer and, and the preseason? What a camp. What a camp he has had. I mean, he came in and um, he doesn't say too many words. He just goes to work. And I love that about him. You know, he's not going to complain about anything, no matter if it's reps. He's not going to complain about that. He's not going to complain about carries, catches. He's not going to complain about opportunities. What he's going to do is take full advantage of those opportunities when they're presented. Do you consider him a power back? And do you think there's even a need for that kind of back in, in this system? I think there's a need for a power back in every system. Um, because you're going to have your third and ones, your third and twos, your fourth and ones, your fourth and inches, third and inches. Um, and, of course, we all know if you're not quarterback sneaking, you're handing the ball off to the back. So I see him as a power back, but I also see him as a back that can make people miss in the field. He's kind of like an upright runner. You've worked with those type of guys before. What, from a stylistic standpoint, from a change of pace standpoint, how can that kind of help him differentiate from the rest of the group? Um, I think that what it brings to his game is when you see a big guy like that, because he's a big guy, um, coming out of the defensive secondary as a safety or corner, coming down trying to hit him or trying to square up on him by some, like some of those DBs that put their head down or some of those safeties that put their head down, he'll make you miss. And then he has the ability to lower his shoulder. So he has both. So I think when you study his film, they'll probably see him making more guys miss than running them over. But don't get it twisted. He can't run you over. You sound pretty excited about him. I, I'm excited about all my backs. <laughs> um, you and Miles come in, and Dante Foreman leaves at the end of last year. Christian McCaffrey uh, also gets traded prior to um, the season ending last year. Did, did you? like anticipate being like, okay, I'm going to come in and rebuild this backfield. And does it feel good that you get to bring Miles along with that endeavor? Yeah, first you're talking about two good backs, man. You know, those guys put it down here, Foreman and Christian. Those guys had some good years here um, and was able to put on a good show for the fans and be productive as that. You know, um, one of the things that as far as me, I just want to put my head down and go to work. 
I love this game. Um, I love the fire and the energy and the juice that this game brings, and I love being a part of it. And just, I, I think when you start talking about an identity, you know, you look at us, we want to run the ball. And, you know, we're not going to let anyone tell us that we have to do anything different. So you got to have that mentality as a running back. So you got to have the mentality that, hey, man, when I'm in that game, there's going to be times where I get five, six, seven carries in a row. So that's what we're building to right now as an offense, as running backs, and just as an offense collectively. Dude, you talk about that fire and bringing that to practice. When the mic'd up segments with you and Vaughn out on the practice field, how did it become Vaughn Bell? How did he become the guy that you kind of go back and forth with? He do a great job, don't he? He needs his own TV show. He's really good. Um, I guess it started back in OTAs when I was kind of talking to the defense. And um, a couple of those guys, you know, would say things back and just kind of drop it. But, you know, Vaughn came off the top rope, and every time I said something, he said three things. And every time I said two, he said seven. And it just kept going from there. But um, we motivate each other. We challenge each other. And then when it's all said and done, you'll catch us walking back, and he'll be like, what did you see? And I'll be like, what did you see? So, you know, along with that motivation part of it, we also kind of coaching each other. Kind of piggybacking on both of those guys, you came here with kind of a blank canvas, you know, rebuilding the backfield, as he said a little bit earlier, all new staff, but then there's a revamped defense. Just how much fun are you having not only, you know, establishing and installing this new offense, but also being able to challenge yourself with some of the best? Like some of the best. Yeah, so the great question. Um, you, don't forget, I was a part of that butt cutting that they gave us uh, when we came down here when I was with the Lions. And um, I had a chance to see this defense firsthand. Had a chance to see the offense, offensive line, and those running backs firsthand. So um, I, I knew the type of players that were on the other side, and we knew that it was going to be a tough battle that day. And, you know, we, were, we definitely was on the, the other end of the spanking, as they say. Um, it's fun. It's fun knowing, you know, these guys, man, they work their butts off. Uh, they care. They want to get better, and they want to win. That's all you want. I got to go, guys. Oh. Yes, yeah, I, I got to go. It's been a very eventful offseason for that running back position and people trying to devalue it. As a guy who played the position, just your take on that. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's been going on for a long time. You know, um, I guess now – uh, the spotlight is on it more than ever, but you know slowly but surely that's been happening. And you know you look at some of the, the best running backs that played the game. I'm pretty sure they'll tell you the same thing. Um, we, those guys are just as effective as a tight end, a receiver, um, every play. So you're blocking every play. You know potentially you got to run a route. Potentially you know you got to go out there and. Um, carry the ball 20 to 30 times. So, um, like I said, it's been a part of the game for a long time, so I'm used to hearing all that. And I just tell my guys, just, hey, man, just put your hat down and keep working.